Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Cesar, with a video here today. Bring us a Photoshop to my very own cool manipulation, explosion, whole theme and idea. So I don't know if you guys know, paid attention, whatever you guys, whatever, whatever, right? So I have two cons figures I did it for. It was Jack Courage and Matt Nadeshot, right? Courage JD and Matt. Um, so with these two individuals, I did these really cool like live now graphics. I was like saying, yo, I'm gonna play Warzone. I'm gonna make this really cool manipulation, learn a little bit of manipulation and like have this really cool explosion behind them, whole idea. That's basically what you're gonna be learning in today's video. And uh, hopefully in the premise, you kind of learn the basics or ideas of manipulation. As far as I know, I'm not a master or expe uh, expert, but if it looks cool, I mean, hey, we got we're getting somewhere. So that's the whole idea behind this video here today. So I do hope you guys enjoy it. So yeah, if you guys did not know, today's video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Now, if you guys do not have any idea what Envato Elements is, it's basically like a really cool like graphics hub when it comes down to like finding anything you need graphics related when it comes out of fonts, textures, patterns, assets for like, uh, like in this case, today's video, I use a lot of cool, the 3D rendered assets, which by the way, when I say 3D render, you can literally change the rotation of the actual object that you want. So I think that's the coolest part for me that sold for me. I already had an Envato Element partnership, or excuse me, before my partnership, I already had an Envato Element subscription for around eight or nine months or so. So I already found use case for Envato. So I think if that, just for that reason alone, which was, which was sold me, okay? When it comes out, like go on Google, you find like a cool stock, you're like, dope, this is dope. But then you have no sense of like changing the actual angle and you can't really find it or use it anymore. And you have to use a crappier version. We've all been there. When I think when it comes down to Envato, I think they have a credible resource. And I think truly you guys will find a lot of resources for them or from them, excuse me. So with that being said, we can hop in today's video and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy But once again, love you guys. And also thank you guys very much to Envato. And uh, if you like the product and the quality of the actual picture, you can thank them. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, let's enjoy. And uh, basically it's going to be me just talking to the camera and giving you guys a cool rundown of just basically everything that I know so far and the idea of how to build this really cool concept, this really cool explosion going on behind. So hope you guys enjoy. Talk to you guys later. Subscribe to HQ out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Enjoy the video. All right, homies, let's get this thing going right here, right now. So what I do have in front of me is the final image that I did for the, of course, when I was doing it on live stream and stuff. So this was about three to four hours of work. So look at the video length, okay? I want you guys to know something. By the end of the video, you're not going to have the most brilliant, freaking amazing thing in the universe. You have to, of course, still spend time on the actual image itself. But I think in this 20 minute video in this sense or however long, how long it is I don't know but in this video you should have some kind of idea how to get to point A to point B and of course make point A you know let it go to Z you know you can get to the point of where you can kind of get the idea of how you can bring it there right so keep that in mind of course the amount of more time you spend on the actual image and seeing itself the better it does come out so keep that in mind okay so what I do have for us in this uh, PSD of course is the stuff that we got from Envato right so we have the mushroom cloud explosion we have a cool little soldier element that I got from actually Google um, just kind of finding a soldier itself so what I ended up doing is I took a soldier PNG that I found or was it a PNG it was just a soldier image itself I kind of just I don't know if I taught, typed in soldier stance or soldier in combat whatever I ended up doing but all I ended up doing is basically erasing his head right of course the surrounding body as well but erasing his head to make sure I get right to where the neckline is and erasing the neckline as well that way you kind of have no neckline there and just kind of leads us to a really cool spot to kind of put our head for courage in a sense right right dead smack on his actual uh, body right so given the body to head ratio sure it's not completely accurate but it does look funny and cool um and kind of gives the idea that you know you still get the idea that there's a head still there connected to this really cool soldier body right so then i have a barbed wire which is kind of our foreground element that will basically be blurred out so kind of like do this right right my blurred out uh hand or you know now zoomed in hand but my background is blurred out so we're gonna have that kind of idea for distance to kind of be helping build the scene itself and then we have two or three smoke textures right that we'll be end up using as well but of course we have the time bomb and the grenade assets that are gonna be like these nice supporting assets that basis uh, assets that are basically gonna be like exploding or whether they were thrown or just they were in the scene okay those are these little two supporting assets and then of course we have the text layer as well that you know will be for the example of what i have here is for a live now so i have live now about to play some war zone you got this really cool epic image for your promo you get more viewers you get more love and that's the whole idea behind this premise of this video so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing going so of course i'm gonna have start off with my we're not even put the barbed wire in let's just focus on the body the head the explosion and the actual background so the first things i want to go ahead and do is actually put a uh, how do you say a drop shadow right below the neck so that way we have a nice cool sort of idea that hey the head is also connected to the body so what i'll do right is i'll take my head layer put a layer right below my head layer then we'll change our foreground to black 
Then, with this black foreground color, we're gonna take our brush. So if I hold Alt with a brush tool, I can move right when I right click, right and left for diameter, up and down for our hardness. So I want a nice zero hardness brush, right? And a pretty good size diameter. I just wanna click a few times, just right, just like right below the neck to add like some nice little shadow there so it kind of feels like the body is connected to the head. Uh, just a little bit more, right? So now what I wanna do is I wanna focus on actually adding, uh, excuse me, adding lights to or, or a shadow and a contrast or an idea of, of if there's exposure behind you right it might be a little bit more darker in the front of the canvas of your your body than it is when it's going to be a nice little halo of light kind of coming you know around you so that's the idea that we want to do here so what i'm going to be doing is using that uh exposure element okay so i'm going to click on the soldier element right here the soldier png i'm going to go to where it says adjustments and i'm going to use exposure Okay, now with exposure, I'm going to immediately make sure I right click and click mask the exposure element or exposure adjustment, excuse me, to our PNG. So of course, anything that you do and change lighting to, you probably want to make sure you, of course, is clip mask. That way you're not messing around with any other thing. So now that I have exposure, clip mask the soldier uh, layer. If I just drop this to negative three exposure, right? It makes it super, super dark, right? I think if you want to go a little bit lighter, you want to go a little bit darker. It's up to you. Just change the actual top bar. Right was more, of course, lighter. Left is more darker, but don't go too crazy where it's like super awkward elemented and like super, how do you say, uh, what's the word? Just super distorted, right? And this is just basically too dark where you can't even see it. It doesn't even have shadows anymore. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go with negative three though for a nice default. Now with my default, I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and I'm going to go ahead and use a black brush to erase, right? And you see over here. So basically your foreground and uh, background colors automatically change to black and white as soon as you click on a layer mask. So if you use a white, you know, instead brush, right, you fill it in. Black erases. You see I'm pressing X on my keyboard to switch between the colors. So I'm going to basically use, right, my black brush to erase only the outside, the kind of like the outline of um, the soldier's outfit, right, or this uniform. So I'm going to take this. <clears throat> excuse me get right in there and make sure i kind of like you know maybe just a little less in there kind of like adding a nice little element of light kind of being surrounded over his shoulders and kind of like a halo of light going around so that's the idea that i'm doing right here so we're going to basically get right into here and make sure we kind of add that i think it looks pretty good there to be fair so if i just uh, uncheck this and check this you kind of see the idea that we're doing and it really helps us add this kind of environment and an idea so what i want to do is i make another new layer right click this new layer clip mask it and i'm gonna basically change my uh brush color to a nice color that's on the canvas that's, that's, that's orange though so one of these orangey tones this kind of cool explosion i'm gonna hold alt and left click this time and not right click so hold alt and left click and if i use the r dropper tool i can select any color on the canvas so I'll select this one right here now what i'll do is i'll take my brush okay i'm gonna make a nice little outline just as i did before not too far in though right just like so Right, what I'll do is I'll change this orange uh, blend mode from normal to linear dodge add. Now you can see it is a little bit too yellowish toned. What I will do is I'll press control U on my keyboard on the actual layer itself. That'll bring up the hue and saturation table, right? If I just take this now, move this to the left, I can get more of an orangey tone, right? I also can take my lightness, lower it down to get a little less pigment, right? Or excuse me, a little bit more pigment in the sense of more darker of that tone. But if I want to move it towards the right, you will get less pigment towards that white kind of idea. So we want to make sure we want to Keep the lightness pretty normalized right around here or so make sure this is pretty orange now it does come off a little bit too much so i'm gonna erase a little bit more right so it doesn't kind of like look too crazy out there like right around here i think this is pretty good because right now i don't have any light behind him but you still have to put a light behind him so that's what i'll do right now actually we'll take a layer right below the actual soldier layer and we'll take our brush layer again select a nice little orange in the actual field right and i'm just gonna click maybe like once or twice right behind him, okay? Then I'm gonna change this moment from whatever it is from normal to linear dodge add. And right away, you can see it's kind of like more of a yellowish tone. I want it more of an orangey kind of, uh, you know, fiery tone. So I'm gonna take this, cue saturation, control U again, move this down a little bit more, maybe even take the lightness down a little bit as well. Right, and saturation up as well for sure. Right about there, I think it's pretty good. So what you can end up doing is if you control T, on this kind of you know fun little kind of you know back light layer control t and use warp i can take this move this on the inside take this move this out take this move this kind of on the inside almost like making an hourglass right and then i can take this push this out a little bit more that way it gives us that kind of like mushroom cloudy feel right so then what i can do excuse me is take my eraser and erase these hard edges i don't want to erase too much but erase these hard edges here that are going on it's kind of like seamlessly you know transition that 
kind of really cool lighting that it kind of feels like it's really, of course, still connected to this cool, like, you know, background explosion going on here. So I love how that looks. I'm going to add a few more. So I add one or two more. Let's just add another yellowish tone one and actually put it a little bit further up this time, right? Linear dodge add again, right? You can see how it's super crazy and it looks really awkward. Lower the lightness down. That'll lower the pigment down and give you that nice color tone back, right? Take the saturation, put it up a little bit. You can see this is looking pretty freaking dope. Now, if you want to, you can use warp as well to also kind of drag and add some more glow in other spots, right? So you can see me kind of adding a little bit more of that glow somewhere else. I can also take the eraser tool, right? And if I don't want to erase too heavily, I can take the eraser opacity and change it down to like 30% or so. So if I take this, or I'm just erasing a little few spots so I can still add that kind of like really cool dark blackish deep kind of black inside this cool uh, explosion still, right? I want to kind of still see that. But I love how the light is cascading on this kind of smoke texture below us right here. So it looks pretty freaking dope. So I think what we have going on is pretty solid. I think I also want to maybe add a little bit of light on his head. Let's add a little clip mask to his head. Let's add a little bit of that orangey tone, right? Right now, it doesn't really matter what orange you choose because you can still, of course, use um, uh, hue, and, hue and saturation or, you know, that table to bring it up and kind of fix it. But hey, we'll add a little bit of light on top of his head. Linear dodge add. Oops. You know, right around here. Maybe take the eraser itself back to 100% opacity. Kind of erase that. Kind of just be on the top of his head a little bit, right? Take this. Make sure it's still towards that orangey tone. Make sure it's not too different from what's going on here, right? Now, so that's pretty good. If you want to make it, make it a little bit more, like, you know, how do you say, glowy. You just basically make a duplicate of it. And then you can take the eraser again and go into it again, right? So that looks pretty freaking good. Okay, so the idea that we kind of already have here, if I just take what we did before just now, right? You see this, then you look at this, you're like, okay, we're building it so it actually adds a little bit more, so it all feels cohesive in the same exact element. So that's what we got going on here. It looks pretty good so far. So what I want to do now is a few of these other things. So I want to add this barbed wire in, right? And on this barbed wire, I'm going to use filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And this is going to be our, again, our foreground element that we're using. I'm going to blur by 4.5 pixels, okay? And press OK. That will give us a nice kind of like, again, this kind of idea where the, the, the camera is in focus here, right? Whatever's going on behind me should be blurred, right? So that's the idea of it adds distance and that kind of idea here. So it's saying, hey, we're pretty close to this barbed wire and maybe Courage is not so close up, but <clears throat> realistically, he'd be way further back and maybe a little even more smaller. But for the idea, that's the kind of idea and the premise of why we're doing it, okay? So with this being added as well, we can go ahead and add some of our smoke and uh, stuff as well. So I'm gonna use the smoke texture here, put it below the soldier. Now I already erased the bottom already, but I'm gonna do that one more time. So you can see on a layer mask, right? So I'll just save the layer mask or delete it, right? Delete the layer mask. I'm gonna use a layer mask, just like so. Click on that button. We're gonna take a nice black brush and just erase the bottom of it. You can see adding smoke, if you have like cool rocks below it, if you wanna add some rock texture and stuff like that, adding the smoke and erasing the bottom can really add that kind of feeling of of you know it's it's really there that kind of idea so that's why i erase it down there but i want to show you guys this really quickly actually i'll show you with the other smoke so i'm gonna add another smoke in as well number two okay now with number two this is something you guys might not know what you do so if you double click of course to open up the layer styles you might notice this but never ever used it so this is blend if if i take alt my alt key and i hold it down and i move this it'll take one note at a time or one half of the note at a time if i take if I don't hold off, if I click on it, it'll move the entire thing. It's super aggressive and weird. And you're probably like, that's why I never use it. But if you hold alt, you can split it. That way it gets a little more adjusted, right? So you can really add this nice kind of shadowy, cloudy kind of feeling, right? By just using blend if, you can just go down here. If it doesn't do anything for you, don't worry about it. You move this one over here. If it doesn't do anything for you, don't worry about it. We can see the idea of it really having a really controlled element of blending. So I can take that. I blended it already, right? Layer mask that baby. And we'll take a nice black brush and of course get into this and kind of add it in some places and delete it in some other places right so we're just going to add a little bit of idea you know right here maybe not too much on his face but maybe around his head a little bit over here right maybe over here and then we can just say okay that's pretty good now i also probably want to add a little bit of a another another layer nice black like going on down here i don't like that i can see so much down there so i'm going to take a black lower the opacity down kind of say, hey, let's tone that down a little bit. It's not going to be super vibrant there or, or bright there, but also the smoke itself here can be a little less in front, you know, right about here. I think it's pretty good. So I think now at this point, I want to add a few more things. A little cool trick that I did was I made a new layer and I took a brush tool 
and I took a cool brush that kind of had a little bit of speckles, right? So something like something close to hopefully you can see it soon this, right? You can see that the idea that's going on speckles. So I'll take a nice black brush and click right a few times. And with these little speckles here, I'll go to filter blur Gaussian blur. I'm a Gaussian blur that maybe the 4.5 is about, about the same, right? Now with this, it almost, when you Gaussian blur these little simple brush hits, it almost looks like there's like debris or like ash going on here. So you can take these, you can erase it a little bit more so it's not super aggressive and super like just out there or too many of them, right? And adds a nice cool like idea of like there's ash and, and stuff like that going around. So if you want to make a duplicate of it, right, maybe move it up a little bit more, right? And then we change the color. Oops, I want to make sure we erase a little bit more of it. Right, maybe change the color to maybe more of an orange, uh, orangey or or reddish tone. Right, you can see I changed it a little more of a reddish tone. It's very subtle, right, but it does add a lot. That kind of idea in building is what you want to make sure you think about when you're putting more time into your into your uh, <clears throat> into your canvas and idea. Right, so I'm gonna make sure I change this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so the last kind I want to make sure I focus on as well is this time bomb and putting elements into it as well. So I'm gonna take this time bomb here. And I'm gonna put this below my soldier, okay? Now I'm gonna put this below my soldier. We're gonna put it right around here or so. Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure I kinda set it in the canvas. So I'm gonna use a camera raw filter, right? What camera raw filter will do, I'm gonna lower the actual vibrance a little bit on this, up the contrast or clarity a little bit, lower the shadows a little bit more, kinda like set it apart a little bit. You can see kinda the idea here, right? This is the, the, the after, this is before. You can see, just tone it down the colors a little bit more, okay? Now after I've done that, I will go into adjustments here, go to where it says exposure, right click, click mask exposure onto the time bomb, right? I'll put this at negative two or so, right? I think negative two is pretty good. Then we'll take our exposure layer mask, right? Black brush and basically erase once again, just like so and make sure we add where the light should hit right around here, I think, right? And I think the exposure can be a, a little, little, a little more. So I'm gonna say like 2.5 or so, right? Now with this, Adding that nice little white kind of around there, right? We kind of say, hey, the light's hitting only this side of it. Looks pretty freaking dope. So what I'll do now is make another new layer. Right click, click mask it. Take a nice little orange again. Okay. Now with this orangey tone like here, we're going to click, right? Make sure we have that nice highlight. Press add, linear dodge add. If I want to press control U to kind of fix things around, I can also do that, right? Let's just say... Right around here is pretty good, I think. I'll just erase a little bit more. Or no, actually what I end up doing is I'll, I'll make it a little bit more believable in that sense. What I'll do is I'll make another new layer and I'll also make sure I highlight some of these angles, like some of these like cuts and curves, right? If I do that, if I change the linear dodge add as well, you'll see if I change the hue as well a little bit more, right? It adds just a little bit of that more believability that it's hitting that surface, it's hitting those angles and it's a little bit more believable in that sense and I think I think it looks pretty okay. I think the color itself needs to be a little more. I think I need a little more color. I don't think the vibrance should be that low, but right around here, I think, right? And I think that idea is pretty dope. So what I'll do is I'll take the shadow or the smoke, excuse me, that's above it, right? And I want to lower this down. I don't want it too much. I want to kind of still see that nice clarity of it. Hell yeah. Okay, that looks definitely a lot better. So I think what I'll do is I won't use a 100% brush. I'll use a, you know, 30% or so brush. I'll go over it in some areas, but I'll make sure you can still see like the clock face. Make sure I click a couple times, right? That whole idea. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'll do the same exact thing, but with the actual grenade. Okay, perfect. So I did a little bit of stuff with the grenade as well. Just add a little bit of like, again, exposure, a little bit of light there, and we have a nice cool look. So I think what I wanna do now is I wanna also make the background of this. So in between layers, you should definitely be adjusting things as you go and not just doing one final color correction at all, or excuse me, only one final color, color correction, that's it. But if I wanna go to this mushroom uh, little cloud here, excuse me, I think where the, like, the lights are, I'm gonna put a little bit of a curve, okay? So this curve, I'm just gonna pick, do a simple S curve, make sure it looks pretty dark, you still have that kind of idea of like, you know, the, the, the mushroom kind of explosion cloud is, is still pretty solid and aggressive looking, right? Now with this, I can also then add above everything a nice camera raw filter. Or it's not camera raw filter, but it's color balance, right? This color balance is, I'll kind of like, kind of come take these colors and, and really give them a, a sense of, 
you know, that's all in one scene. So if I just take this color balance and I add a little bit of red tones, magentas and blues and yellows and things like that, it can look pretty dope in the end of the sense. You can see this little adjustment here kind of like ties in all the colors together, right? Then I'll take Control, Alt, Shift, and E. That combination will basically make one single layer of everything in one composition and put it in one single layer. So now that I have this, I can go ahead and use filter blur Gaussian blur. Well, Gaussian blur by about two or so. I'll say two pixels. Okay, layer mask. I'm gonna make this completely black. So I'm gonna just go hold hold Alt backspace, make it completely back uh, black. If your foreground color is black, okay. Then I'll take a white brush, right? So basically, what it'll do is take this white brush. So I have a Gaussian blur as the the actual layer. You can see it's also adding Gaussian blur while I do that. So I'm gonna take a white brush. It'll add the Gaussian blur whilst I'm doing this, right? I'm just gonna add a nice kind of cool, like almost like a vignette, I think it's called, or, you know, like a, not like using a black, but basically using a bit of a blur going surrounding the canvas itself and really having you focus on the middle. So now that we have that, I think we basically go ahead and finalize this by putting our text in, okay? And then we'll also do another one more thing, Control Alt Shift E, which is basically, again, uh, convert to a smart object. And we'll use filter, camera raw filter, and then with this, we go into this, press this little Y before and after. I'll take the clarity, put it up. Blacks, put it up. Shadows, put it up. Highlights, put it up. Contrast as well, maybe a little bit of vibrance as well, right? Maybe we go to the fourth tab for the hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments. We take the saturations of the oranges, bring that up a little bit, maybe even the luminance as well. Uh, maybe change the hue to be a little more like this or so. We'll take the saturation of yellow, make sure that's definitely like nice and aggressive. Right, you can kind of see what we're building here. It's pretty freaking dope. We can add a little bit of clarity. Oh, excuse me, uh, sharpness, uh, and a little bit of luminance detail as well. Maybe a little bit of curves going on here. And we'll take this top like histogram, and we'll make sure that these colors are hitting the way we want to hit if you just take it and move it left and right. Right? And I think, yeah, let's go with that. Let's press OK. And I think we got ourselves a pretty cool kind of like idea of of this cool character and whatever kind of face you put on it but in this really dope element of it, it's basically exploding and i think we did pretty hit this like this pretty good idea here so i think of course when you look at it from this the difference between, uh, between here and here you get more of the i feel of um positioning right and like i also added like stars and other things like that you can add different objects you don't have to add barbed wire you can add like a broken down car or something like that Anything you want to add is basically, it's up to you at that point, right? Um, if you want to add more like, you know, smoke and stuff like that, I can probably still add it above the final image, right? If I just take some smoke, right? We'll take this and kind of like erase around these little areas here. We can still add a little bit more dynamic to the actual, you know, uh, the, the, the the image itself. I just keep on going and keep on building and stuff like that. But if you do do that, make sure you still color correct and make sure it looks kind of cohesive together using basically curves, color balance and brightness and contrast. You know what I mean? So with that being said, that is basically how I ended up making the live now kind of segment stuff that I did a few months ago in that sense where they were using it a lot. I know a lot of you guys already tried it yourselves, but now you got a video for it and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. But that being said, thank you guys so very much for watching. Of course, leave a like if you guys liked it. Also, thank you very much to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video here today. All the amazing assets and the angles and stuff like that. You wouldn't be able to find that kind of idea of this really nice high quality stuff that you can, of course, change the angle to to fit the perfect canvas. It's incredible. I'm going to use it on stream. A lot of you guys bought it on stream as well. So keep in mind, it's a great, great resource. I personally use it as well, and I purchased it myself, you know, so keep that in mind. So love you guys. I'll tell you guys later. So HQ out. You have to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking better, guys. Later. Much love, peace, and enjoy.